Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Geneforge where we are going to uh, continue the uh, the normal path through the game after that latest and last expedition into the Shaper Crypt. Well, last at least until I uh, I know for sure or I um, have an idea about how to progress there further. But yeah, for the time being, my vengeance has been has been sated. My thirst for vengeance has been sated, as it were. Um, and we're going to take a look at this area here, Valley of the Wind, clear the ghost gates. All right, cool. I had not actually looked at this before, so I did not know, but um, apparently the ghost gate is indeed in here and not up here. So that's something different entirely. Interesting. Um, yeah, well, let us take a look at that and see if it's just, if it continues the trend that we started with the Western Waste. I, I really hope not. But, I mean, it wouldn't be too surprising. So, what do we... Ah, we do get something here. You enter a maze of narrow valleys, scoured out of the rock by centuries of harsh winds. The walls are dead, bare stone. Nothing grows up here. The wind howls up and down the valleys, making it impossible to hear or think clearly. You find, however, that the howling sound... The howling sounds are not merely the wind. Mixed in, you can hear an unholy keening. Aha, uh -huh, ghost gate, I see. It is hard to see because of the dust stinging your eyes, but you think you can see flickers of movement down the pass. Whatever it was, it was moving very fast. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I don't see anything yet. Never mind. A Witwalker. Okay, some sort of ghost. How strong are you? 15. Not a lot of hit points, no resistances worth mentioning. Alright, okay. Uh, should I heal you? I mean, hit point wise, I should be able to just heal this thing. Oh, unless we straight up miss. Okay, you are stunned, so you're basically dead. Okay, and you're worth 22 experience, speaking of which. Um, oh, I'm extremely close to leveling up, in fact. Uh, like two more of those things and I'm gonna level up. Huh, which means that I will be able to increase mechanics and possibly uh, visit Ouroboros again and see how that goes. Interesting. Well, for the time being, uh, let's just start with the first little side passage here, which is charmingly decorated with skulls and blood spatters. And these elements? Oh, and another one of these guys. Okay, uh, let's try that again. Quick action. Oh, and, I mean, he's basically dead. We'll just... Wait. 22 more experience. I like it. Okay, I mean, so far these have not been particularly bad at all. You find several dead outsider soldiers. The bodies are frozen stiff. Terrified expressions are frozen on their faces. Nice. And there's another... Okay, I guess they are really fast. Thankfully, they only move fast. And only outside of combat. Making them not the most... Uh-oh. <laughs> Not the most, um, I don't know, intimidating enemies, I must say. Especially the fact that they only attack once. I mean, that's really... I'm kind of done with enemies who just get an arbitrary amount of actions per turn. And then we level up. I mean, I'm not going to spend those points quite yet. Also, how much essence did I gain? Was I at exactly 160 before? Or 164, perhaps. Something like that. I don't know. Not sure. We gained a few points, as always. Okay, Steel Javelins. Um, I'm almost at my limit, though. And I think these, no matter what I do, yeah, they will just go straight to my equipped Javelins. It's fine, I guess. Although, what if I... Um, did I really just do that? I sure did. Okay, well, that's... Uh, I meant to split the stack. Hello there. Okay, wow. Okay, 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 okay. I was also just about to say that uh, so long as we only encounter one at a time, they are, they're not going to be that bad. Well, here we have two of them for the first time. I'm going to try and stun you. If you have no resistance against. Okay, good. And you should die from acid. All right. Oh, you actually did get to act, and you attacked Nira, but thankfully you didn't kill her. 
Um, she's gonna run away in terror. I don't like that. You know what? Let's play it a bit safe here. So far, they have not even come close to one-shotting anyone. So, I think. Well, you're gonna. You're not gonna. Yeah. Okay. I want Richie, and I can terrify you. So, we'll see if. Just kill it with damage. No, doesn't look like it. Oh. Oh. Okay. And then it decided to didn't want to fight anymore. Sorry. Still worth 20 experience, which is good. Yes, okay, we are level 20. So it wasn't really worth that much more while we were below its level. Interesting. I feel like the like uh, experience drops off much faster for enemies that are below your level than, um, than the opposite way around. Giving you bonus experience for killing stronger enemies. Anyway, we have Iron Sword, uh, Essence Pod, yes. Chain my vest. I, I guess I'm just so used to holding holding down control with my little finger, <laughs> my pinky, that I don't know. I I mean, I guess I must have been trying to to hold shift to split the stack, but well, it's fine. <clears throat> oh, it really is fine because we're just finding more still javelins. In that case, so what I was trying to do there before everything just now happened. Uh, so I wanted to split the stack, so I would only equip, I, I guess it was six that I could safely equip, six or seven maybe, without being encumbered and having another stack in my inventory, and I wanted to see if more picked up javelins would just go there to, to the inventory rather than my equipment. I don't know. Um, curing sports, yes. Fine cloak. So, chitin armor. Uh, I guess it's not really magical, it's just a type of material, and yeah, we've seen those before, I think. Oh, and there are indeed more javelins here. And some tranquil thorns. Six. Seven. Okay, I can't equip seven without being encumbered. Now, let's try this again. Split. Oh, actually, wait a second. No. Seven. I put there. I have one there. And now, of course... Oh, there are more. And those do indeed go to my equipment, which, you know, in under different circumstances would be would be nice, I guess. Um, it's fine. Uh, did I loot this body? No, I did not. Iron sword. Sell. Tranquil baton. Uh, sell. Sell. Pick up. And sell. All right, okay, that was some good loot. I guess those guys were just... just fell victims to the patrolling speedy ghosts. Okay, another one. I guess I will usually get the first attack here, but... Oh, right. Also, she's terrified. Oh, well. Yep. Not a big deal, though, because... Uh, would, would you please? Come on. I'll wait for you. Just snap out of it. Freeze and terror, there's the next ghost. Okay, thanks for missing. Mira did not run. She just didn't do anything. Okay, um, fair enough, I guess. Right, I'm encumbered as well. Are you coming now? There we go. Um, well, how many more of these things are going to be here? Probably a few. Well, let's go down this way. All right, some sort of artificial structure. Lots of lots of corridors, or valleys, I guess. Uh, what uh, pools? Yes, but not the usual essence pools. You enter a warm, comfortable, steaming bathhouse. Uh, the moment you step inside, the sound of the wind outside dies off. The warmth immediately makes you feel comfortable and drowsy. Hmm, drowsy isn't necessarily good. The objects inside the room are very strange. They're very slightly insubstantial. If you concentrate, you can almost see through them. Almost. There are two pools at the south end of the room. Strangely, they are still full of swirling, steaming water. All of these centuries, they are st still ready for use. Yeah, right. After all these centuries. Um, I don't trust this, naturally. Uh, this is a clear example of um, illusion, or, I don't know, I guess Fata Morgana, created uh, by whatever evil presence here is also responsible for the, for the ghosts. And as soon as I take a bath here, Falling for the most obvious trap in the universe. 
I will, I don't know, get ambushed by uh, by ghosts or something. Hmm. I will try this naturally because, you know, it's a thing to do. Um, mostly also, or partially also because I'm curious to see how this works. I mean, in another engine, I would expect this entire, the entire house to just disappear and, you know, turn out to be just, I don't know, something else entirely. But I don't know if the engine can actually do that. Useful. And what? You slip out of your armor first, checking to make sure you're safe from immediate attack. Well, I mean, I, I do have my guardian creation, so... Then you get into the pool. The water is warm and refreshing. It seems to soak into your joints, soothing them. Uh, you feel refreshed and rejuvenated, and I, indeed, I did heal for a hundred. Not my creations, though, which is a bit of a bummer. Should I heal her? I mean, she's not missing that much health. Um, that is suspicious. What happens if I do it a second time? It heals me again. What about this one? It actually restores... The water is foul-smelling, but it makes your skin tingle when it touches it. It has an energy which slowly leaks into you. You feel energized. Is something bad actually happening? Because this can't just be beneficial, right? Hmm. Something extremely suspicious is going on here. I mean, for now, I, I guess I'll take it. Hmm. Now let's, let's stick to the outer path here. Hello. Not a bathhouse? What is this? Some sort of rampart? Fortification? Hello? Uh, the moment you step inside this passage, the howling of the wind outside grows quiet. There are bones all over the floor of the passage. Some of them are very old. Some of them are not old at all. It's icy cold in here. You can't keep from shivering. Nice. Is there anything useful on the ground? Or just... Junk. Well, something semi-useful. Um, surely, this is going to be just as nice as that bathhouse. Hmm? Well, I'll take that. Uh, here goes nothing. You slide the lid off the crypt. Inside you see a mummified body, still in amazing condition. The garments it was swathed in crumbled long ago, crumbled long ago, but the mummy is still pristine. It has a gold ring on its finger. It would be easy to slip it off. Classic. In fact, um, I mean, that I, I remember at least one situation in one of the Avernum games, possibly multiple, multiple similar setups. Where something bad, of course, did happen when I when I stole the ring. I mean, it's pretty obvious. As you look at the ring, you start to feel the wind swirling around you. It picks up puffs of dust and lifts them up around you. Sometimes, when the dust gets close, it feels like a touch. Mm -hmm. Take the ring. I mean, I, will I just summon enemies? Will I get cursed? Will something else happen entirely? I'm tempted to not take the ring now, but on the other hand... I'll take the ring. Arcane band. Oh, okay. You easily slide the ring off of the finger. It comes away smoothly as if it has been taken off and put on, put back on many times before. Interesting. The wind dies down, but you hear in the distance many angry howls. The ring came, it appears, with a curse. Um, so did we summon more enemies? Is that it? Or is there actually a curse? In some of the other Spiderweb games, there were actually like key items curses that you that, that would would stay as key items in your inventory and actually do bad things hmm. uh, the occasional curse is part of the cost of, the, of adventuring well you can't be sure yet how far it extends hopefully it doesn't reach far beyond this region uh, I don't know oh, also wait hold on it says something it said something right there but I didn't see it uh, take the ring what oh was it still the quick save Hold on. Quick save? Oh yeah, okay, that was just a game save. I think that was still floating. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, Arcane Band. What, what did I even get? Is it even worth possibly cursing myself? Uh, it gives armor. Hostile effect resistance. Creation hostile effect resistance. And blessing and curses. Okay. I mean, stun resistance is nice. It's only 10%, but 
I think it's naturally quite low. Uh, what's going here? Yeah, okay. Wait, it's only 10% now. With the ring. Still 10%. Wait, doesn't it... Doesn't that get displayed here? What's the point, then? I thought this reflected everything combined. But I guess not. Maybe this, these are just my base defenses. Hmm. Okay, well, either way... If it's only 10%, then doubling it would be would of course be nice, especially also for my creations. But um, we will still get affected most of the time. Um, the arcane band, which the gang considers extremely valuable for some reason, does give more protection. Um, blessings and curses are actually quite nice, since I rely a lot on crowd controlling enemies. And uh, occasionally when I use blessings, the blessing, um, of course, having that buff is also nice. Hmm. I mean, is the, th the question is, is hostile effect resistance, does that affect things that stun you as well? So is that actually better than just stun resistance? I wonder. Um, I mean, I guess I decided to pick it up and, you know, I'm, I'm going to live with the consequences. It seems like a like a good ring. Oh, okay. Yes, so they are definitely out to hunt me now. Which is okay, I'm gonna heal you. I'm gonna stun you. And kill you. Or whatever you do to ghosts. Okay. Oh, right. They, for some reason... Heal you again. For some reason, even though they are stunned, they still get a second action. At least sometimes. Not entirely sure how that works, but it's okay. Right, I'm still in combat. Ugh. I am going to press the right button this time. Pick up seven, put them here. There we go. I guess I could actually put an Axis of Steel Javelins uh, in my junk bag, uh, or not my junk bag, <laughs> rather, uh, than my actual my actual storage. Um, and I'm also going to put the Stabilizing Band there, I guess, just in case it turns out that more, more specific stun resistance is going to be useful or desired at some point. Don't mind if I do get a double cast here. Uh, would you... Guys, please. Nira, you're... Oh, she's she's terrified. Okay, well that's fine. Please in terror. Well, frozen in place in terror. Save the game, I guess. So that was that structure. Oh, there's more. Oh, could this actually be part of the ghost gate that I'm supposed to clear? Oh, let's see. oh wastes ghost. Oh, well, thirteen. Less hit points, le lower level and less hit points than the one ring ghosts here. Interesting. Also, I think uh, uh, I think um, the, the those couple of ghosts that I fought in the uh, Western Wastes area uh, were also just called Wastes ghosts, like these. Hmm, maybe the same, literally the same kind of NPC. Uh, from here, you get a good look at the Northern Gateway. It's not shaper construction. It's a ruin many centuries old. It was carved out of solid granite which was how it survived centuries of scouring by the harsh wind. What remains of the architecture is strange, alien. You haven't seen anything like it before. It's incredibly square and angular, not curved like large large shaper buildings. Okay, so more precursor artifacts. Would you not just... I swear, the AI is sometimes just out to kill me. I mean, these guys are weak. Unless they have something up their ghostly sleeves. That isn't apparent quite yet. But they should be extremely easy to kill. Um, well, we did miss this one. Um, twice. Okay, good. Well, so far so easy. Nope, that's... That's fine. There goes one javelin. Hmm. Uh, enemy? Oh! Oh. 
More waste ghosts. I see. Well then. Combat will continue. Uh, these cannot be terrified. I, I guess we'll just wait for them here. Maybe spread apart a little bit. They should be able to walk un until around here, and depending on whether they have any area attacks or range attacks. Well, okay, they didn't use any. Which gives us a full round of things to do. All oh, right, you still can. You can do this, though. Okay. Quick action, too. And acid is... Oh, crap. Okay. I guess this is the ghost gate, so... An excessive number of ghosts is not, should not come as a surprise. You retreat, and we'll do basically the same thing again. Oh, God. Okay, they can leap. Are these still the same? They Yeah, they still come in different colors for some reason. Hmm. Okay, acid on all of you. Also, stun. Good. Mm, I guess, meanwhile, we focus on this one down here. Okay, they hit pretty hard. And yeah, so we'll just finish you off. You should die. They should both die, so I'm just gonna heal myself. Okay. That went pretty well. Um, healing? Oh, actually, I'm not gonna be using normal healing pots anymore. Mm, Venom Baton. Obviously, these are a lot, a lot uh, more lightweight than javelins. While also providing multiple stacks. <clears throat> this one also poisons. Hmm. The damage is a little bit lower overall. Actually, I can just compare it like this. Hmm. I suppose since I can use these, maybe that would be more suitable for my character than uh, Steel Javelins. If I need some sort of uh, physical range attack. Maybe. So I'll put these into my junk bag just so I have some, some room, but I'm gonna try to remember not to th actually sell them next time, or rather to put them in my storage before attempting to sell. Hi there, random lonely waste ghost. Uh, ghost. Okay. I'm guessing this one was supposed to also join the attack, but somehow forgot. Okay. Skull piles, always nice. Ooh, skull piles with lots of stuff inside. And shield, broken baton, okay. And more stuff, blood sword, iron sword, chainmail vest, okay, more skulls. And that is the exit. Oh. Huh. You have managed to get through the ancient gateway, and you have winnowed down the number of aggravating shades. You will be able to pass this region more easily now. Okay. Managed to pass through the gateway, indeed. That was not very hard. In fact, this entire area... Unless I'm missing something about that curse that, that makes this much worse, somehow... Uh, this was so, so much easier than the Western Waste. It is clear now. I'm... Assuming that the quest is also technically cleared, so I guess I'll return to uh, my friend at the junkyard. Spirit City. Huh. Okay. More ghosts? I mean, these ghosts were absolutely no problem, so... Give me more more of those. I mean, any day. So long as I don't also have ghostly pylons or something. Which would be interesting, honestly. In its own right. Not necessarily something I want to in encounter or experience, but still interesting. Well, I guess we'll just keep exploring this place for now. There's another one of these. Maybe one I can touch. Indeed. Um, okay. 
placed here by the natives who lived on this island long ago, long before the shapers arrived. The cliff walls have sheltered it from the perpetual wind. You notice one part of the pillar has been worn smooth. Yes. Um, that is the same as the others before. Touch the bare spot. When you rub the worn area, you feel a sharp stinging sensation up and down your arm. You jerk your hand away. Hmm. Okay, well, that's the third one of these that actually had this interaction and reaction on my part. Also, no more patrolling ghosts? Or did literally all the remaining patrolling ghosts, wind ghosts, or what were they called? Did those just swarm me as I picked up the ring? Is that the curse? Because if so, that's uh, that's extremely benign. Oh, you know what? I did not actually double check. Shaw language, leaving feather, dog's key, 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 amulet. Tombs anyone? The valley not far southeast of Pentel. It seems to have something to do with the many tombs there. Oh, that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Key, bone baton. Inside a crumbling pylon. That's true. I found this one by that stone circle. Hmm. Did I ever actually do anything with it? Or, God, I don't remember. I think picking it up triggered something in that area. But I don't know if I actually actively used this item somewhere. Hmm. Anyway, the rest are just keys. So n no curse item here. <clears throat> huh. Well, I guess I'll keep looking around. There are more artificial structures, apparently. This is also going to be... Illusory. This is an old ruined home, very old. It was the, the hovel of some of the natives who lived here before the Shapers came. But it can't be, because everything looks new. You look at the items closer. They're strange. They have a hazy, slightly insubstantial quality, as if, if you turned away, they would disappear. But when you touch them, they feel solid enough. Above the wind, you hear a, so a sound coming from farther in. It's a rattling sound, like the lid of a box bouncing up and down. <laughs> Something trying to escape from its coffin? Oh. No, just a... Uh... Regular, perfectly normal treasure chest. Some food in here, which is definitely not not suspect in the slightest. Okay. I mean, maybe they just put some sort of spell um, on their on their old buildings to preserve them for eternity, or at least an image of them. Maybe that's all it is. Nothing spooky going on at all. There is a box here. It has the same insubstantial quality as everything else in the room. The most interesting thing about the box is the way the lid is rattling on top. It seems like there is something inside trying to push its way out. Of course we open the box. The box contains nothing but dust. But it seems to be vigorously swirling around under its own power. Then it swirls out and forms a pair of specters. Oh, okay. That is more or less what I expected. I was terrified. And stunned. That is not good at all. Windwalker. Ooh. A stronger version, same level, but more, a lot more health. That is really bad. I mean, they... Oh, never mind. 30% stun resist, yeah. I mean, that's still only 30%. Um, I'm going to walk you here. Okay, that should miss my protagonist, I hope. Good. And now hopefully I can stun them both. Okay, well, I stunned one. I'm going to have you heroically throw yourself at that enemy. Oh, you were trying to run away. You as well. Um, these guys are weird. Stunned. Okay, and they're literally just trying to run out of here. Trying and succeeding. Okay, only fleeing for one more turn. That's nice. 26 XP. Well, this guy's getting away, unless... Um, how much acid damage are they taking? 60? 73? So, in theory, taking two more takes of acid damage will kill it. So... That should solve all my problems. You guys are just gonna guard the entrance here. Yep, definitely just died. Okay. 
Well then. That feels like it shouldn't have gone as well as it did, but I'll take it. Save the game. Uh, you can't do anything else with this. Okay, so that was just a box full of um, 52 experience. I'll take it. As I just said. Alright, okay. Cool. I'm gonna have any more of those kinds of encounters. This is the... No, this is not quite the main path. That one ends about here. Okay. Trying to focus really hard to not miss any nooks and crannies. I've seen a couple of these similar setups, these kind of stone plates with skulls on them. At some intersections, I wonder if that's in any way relevant. Um, <laughs> there is the bathhouse. Just out of curiosity, now that I've triggered a curse that might affect this entire area, according to the game, is this going to be different now? Use the pool, uh, press the right button, Oh, you slip out of your armor, get into the pool, the water is warm and refreshing so much so that you almost immediately fall asleep. Then the shades swarm the bathhouse. What shades? I kill them all. They rush in and engulf you. You never wake up. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm just literally dead. Nice. Okay. Well then. So I guess it really was just perfectly safe before I... I Took the ring. Hmm. And this is a dead end, maybe? Well, maybe not, actually. No, never mind. Just goes around this building. Oh, but now we've actually seen everything. Looking at the map very closely. Uh, well, we freed the ghost gate. We took the ring. Uh, we touched the pylon. Hmm. Okay. And apparently we've killed all of the wandering ghosts. Well, that was, again, extremely, extremely easy compared to what came before. Suspiciously so, but I mean, obviously, that's all there is here. So, um, yeah, let's return to the junkyard. Maybe, no, actually, let's return to Vakiri first because I wanted to put something in my storage. And I meant to sell things at the junkyard. Unless I've done that, I'm... Mm, I meant to do it, but I'm not sure if I did in between episodes. So actually, I have... Well, I don't have a ton of things in my junkyard. Uh, junk, junkyard, junk pack, whatever. Um, right, so we're gonna take this out. What else was there? Uh, the steel javelins, yes. Anything else? No, I think that's it. I don't see anything else that I would have wanted to keep. Okay. So, container. We put this here just in case. It's not worth that much. So, you know, selling it is not a huge, huge deal. Put that, put those there. I guess I'm going to be using this venom baton. Uh, actually, do I have, do I just happen to have some venom thorns? I guess not. And obviously I never put any to the back. We have this thing. Spiky silver orb. Well, obviously, I didn't have this with me when I when I visited the the pedestals in the Shaper Crypt. So, is it possible that this is one of the small round objects that needs to go in one of those depressions? I mean, it's possible. I have no specific reason to assume any kind of connection between those things. Also, this is spiky and not, you know... Just from the description, it doesn't sound like it would fit. It, um, not that it was described in, in particular detail, so it could be could be this. But either way, I need two items, right? Um, so, I don't know. I guess I, I don't feel... Un until I have at least a second item, or some further hint, um, I'm not going to take that and, you know, just just on the off chance that it works. I'm not going to make my way back to the control room because that's just such a pain dealing with the patrols on the way. So, I'm not going to. But it is something that has occurred to me as a very faint possibility. Just putting that out there. Right. 
Uh, we got the ghost gate quest from from you here, right? Hello? Proof. That's right. Uh, I kill all the shades at the gate to the ruins. Yes. 140 experience. Nice, nice. Quest complete. Thank you, Shaper. I do not know if that will help. Perhaps there is nothing to scavenge beyond, but we will try. If you wish, I can let you buy some of our rare items. Right. Um, do you have any quality equipment? Uh, ridiculous prizes. Tinker's gloves. Two to mechanics. Hmm. They are extremely expensive. Honestly, a little bit upsettingly so. You know, doing a quest for him to even unlock these items and then having the prices be ridiculous is a bit uh, questionable. Fiora's cloak. Exactly what I what I have been using before the Guardian Club, right? Reaper thorns. One single Reaper thorn for 576. Wow. Uh, fibrous breastplate. Very, pro very, very protective. Um, I feel like I've found something with similar resistance values before, and obviously chosen not to use it. Uh, I mean, stun resistance. Actually, 50% stun resistance. That might almost make it worth considering. Just, you know, if I really need to get through, I don't know, something protected by pylons. Um, also increases energy resistance, yeah, okay. Minus hit chance, I mean, obviously that wouldn't matter at that point. And minus 10 fires resist, whatever. Um, hmm. Interesting. Shielding knife, can't equip. Melee skill 3, don't I have that? I thought I had 3. I guess not. Plus 10 physical armor, hmm. I mean, it is a lightweight melee weapon that actually gives me a passive bonus that would be useful. Almost like wearing a second shield. Um, since I don't care about how good it is as a weapon. And it's not expensive at all. The thing is that I would need to increase melee skill by one. And I guess since I can buy these Tinker's Gloves, and I mean, who am I kidding? I'm, I'm going to buy these. Right? This is not going to get any less expensive. Unless he has a... I'm gonna, just going to quickly check if he has a follow-up quest for me, perhaps, to re reduce those prices. Uh, I want to sell something... Actually, I can't sell you things because... Uh, yeah, I specifically got rid of anything that I might want to keep. Okay, anyway. I mean, I have a lot of money right now. Still, that is more than half of what I have just for those gloves. Uh, aren't you worried about the rogues outside? No, he's not. Um, outsiders... What sort of things are around here. Dry wastes. Yes. Uh, the old tomb. Yes. I mean, that's the Shaper, Shaper Crypt, right? Hmm. What do you know about this tomb? Almost nothing, of course. Anything else? The orb. Well, he does mention both the tomb and the orb, so maybe there is a connection. Maybe there is. Clutching a metal orb to its chest. A silver orb, which is not actually an orb, but a crescent. Hmm. Well, and that's that. So, no follow-up quest, as far as I can tell. So I'll have to pay the prices that he asks. So, yeah, I'm just going to buy them. So, because, I mean, that basically means that I... Well, obviously, with these, with these gloves on, I will be able to interact with the... With the... Uh, spore box in Ouroboros' prison without putting any points into mechanics. In fact, that brings me up to level 10 mechanics, which is higher than I was really planning to go for anyway. So that's good. That means that I can spend some points on, on melee skill, so I can equip the shielding knife, which is, all things considered, not that expensive. I think I'm just going to do that. Of course, I don't know for sure that I will. The ten mechanic skill is going to be enough to do whatever else there might be to do in the bunker. Maybe I'm not going to buy it quite yet. Also, I haven't seen what the purifying blade actually um, gains in terms of bonuses as I absorb any canisters. Just because I haven't really been finding ever since I found, <laughs> ever since I got that blade, I have not been running into any more canisters, which you know were so plentiful before that. Perfect timing, I guess. Um, 
but obviously we're going to run into more and some of them might will not be super super useful to me so i will eventually see what bonuses gets and if it's nothing useful to me nothing spellcasting related then i'm going to probably just hand it over to complete the quest and not keep it for myself so long story short i will probably go back for this uh, come back for this purifying dagger just for the extra 10 points of armor I mean, it's just physical damage reduction you know but still and that's an area where i'm quite lacking compared to everything else like 33 armor um right melee weapons it is at three. Oh, because um because of the cloak yeah, yeah. okay so it's really only at two that's only four points i mean it is four points though because this is a weak area hmm I have 11 now. I wanted to increase fire shaping and magic shaping. But I can't do that and increase. Oh, I... Uh, yeah, well, no. I could I could um, increase both fire shaping, magic shaping, and healing craft. I guess I guess the, the dagger is not really a priority. And also, I want to... Okay. One thing after the other. I have the gloves now, so I can go back to the bunker. And see what this is all about. Also, 41 minutes? Okay. Let's just... I just want to sate my curiosity and see what this is all about. Also, put those actually on. I guess I'll be... <laughs> I'll have to be carrying those with me forever now. So that's one more inventory slot gone. Oh well. Save the game. So these were five before? There are four now. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine. It's still worth 20 XP, which is a nice bonus. Yes, so 8 total instead of 10, which is an improvement. We have those mines there. Yep. So I guess I'm going to play it safe and actually, yeah, I'd rather have the perfect control about my movements and not have to rely on the pathfinding, which can be unreliable. So we'll just make sure. Okay. I knew that this was going to work because that specifically required nine before. So these are now disarmed. Okay. So I should be able to bypass this one. But probably not the purple one. Should be safe enough. Right? Yes. There is another spore box there. What does that one do? Hmm. Well, first of all, we have access to this. This control panel is still completely intact. So is the machinery that surrounds it. Um, okay. Everything is warm to the touch and vibrates with power. Except for a faint layer of dust, it is all clean and ready for use. Alas, there is no there are no labels, no documentation. The controls are quite complicated. Yeah, but, I mean, with my superior mechanic skill, I'm going to be able to intuit what this does and how. Activate the device. What could possibly go wrong? You poke at the switches and buttons. With a little bit of experimentation, you figure out what you are doing. This isn't that different from devices back on the mainland. First, you direct the power into the crystals that surround you. Then you discharge it. The room fills with a blinding flash of light. Your hair stands on end. Your skin burns. Then all is quiet. Nothing else happens. Um, okay. Am I supposed to know what that does? Incineration chamber. Uh, I'm assuming something happened downstairs in the incineration chamber. Although, it says incineration chamber here. And there was a bright flash of light. My hair stands on end. That's it. Uh, if I do that again, it says the same thing. Okay. I mean, it doesn't seem like it would have affected that whatever effect is going on in Ouroboros' room. What's it say here? Incineration chamber. Okay. So this is not the control for the incineration chamber, but the chamber itself. Weird. Um, also, some of these mines are flashing. Does that mean that those are dangerous to me? Can I... These are both flashing, right? As is the red one? Occasionally? Yes. Not this one, though, I don't think. 
Obviously, these two are safe. Hundred points. Okay, that one's safe. Oh god, is this safe? That is not safe. Okay, so that dealt two hundred eighty-six damage, or something like that. Interesting. Um, the question is, what is it between these two, uh, between here and this this door, rather? I mean, I can't pass between these. Between these mines, because of the of the pillar. I guess I haven't specifically tried the red one, but why would that be? Arm, never mind. Okay, thanks. Finding. Please. Please. Okay. Maybe the red one isn't as bad. Sure seems as bad. Okay, um, yeah, not sure what's up with that. Maybe this door is gonna open after the boss fight, and maybe this whole thing has nothing to do with the boss. Actually, maybe this door is gonna open after the boss fight, and that's just another approach to uh, to let me reach this control panel without having to pick the locks and activate the spore box. Maybe these spore boxes here, this one, maybe I can safely reach one over here, and then this one, and then this one. And those will require less mechanic skill. So I can eventually get here. Huh. I don't know. I guess one last thing, oh god, before this episode becomes even longer. I'm gonna check out if something actually happened downstairs. Not really sure what would happen there. But absolutely nothing at all happened previously. And now I did something. So, I guess we'll see. And then obviously next time, I would do it now, but I don't want this episode to become ridiculously long. Okay, no new message. Nothing looks different. Nothing has been set free from these vats, apparently. Uh, this door is still in place, annoyingly. And of course this table or whatever is still in place as well. There's still an unopened chest, unreachable. Right. So yeah, I'm hmm. still puzzled by this by this area. I guess I'm gonna put this back on. And next time I'm going to take another look at Ouroboros, see if the fight itself has changed in any way. Maybe it's become easier. Maybe she was being buffed by whatever machinery. And something I did there, even though it doesn't say that. I feel like the game would explicit would make it clearer that I did something specific, right? I mean, she's still here. Both of her things are still here. The crystals are, well, all but one are shredded, but I think that's been the case before. I don't suppose this door is opened? Or will open now? I tried that before, right? Yeah. Yeah, I must have walked, must have walked around the entire room. Okay, um... Yeah, so this is still mysterious. Hmm. Well, next time I'm gonna see if the fight seems different at all, if I if it seems like I can make any progress there, and if not, I guess I'll save that for even later and until maybe something becomes clearer or I just become stronger and feel more comfortable, feel more confident fighting her. Actually, um before I forget. I know, long episode, but um I think I'm not going to increase melee weapons for the physical. I'm, I mean, I'm mostly being killed by debuffs and straight-up magical damage. So the 10 extra armor is not a pro priority, and I, again, I have not even seen what the what this uh, chargeable sword is going to become. So I think I want to wait until that. I, it doesn't seem like I will need to increase mechanics at all. I am somewhat tempted to put more points into leadership, but where do I stop? If I put one point in there, I will be. Uh, I'll still be able to increase fire shaping and healing. Healing only in preparation for the eventual mass healing spell. Not because my healing is uh, needs buffing really. Uh, do I increase fire shaping or magic shaping? 
I mean... I mean... I think I want to increase fire shaping so my roamers get one extra level, which should help with, you know, hitting things. And of course will eventually help with my drakes being more powerful, so... Do I increase leadership? There's a small chance that this will this one extra point will actually make a difference in the Ouroboros dialogue because it seemed like I was very close to some sort of threshold. So you know what? Yeah, I wasn't even considering this, but um, I did it now, and I apparently miscalculated because how did I? Oh, because once again I was looking at the value, not at the cost. These cost five, not four. My bad. Well, I guess that's still fine, though. Still gonna do that. I don't need healing craft right now. I was just going to pick that in preparation, but, you know, that's fine. That is perfectly okay. Fire shaping and leadership. Sure. But leadership should come in handy at some point. If not here, then at some other point. And these guys are now level 14. And have slightly higher damage and health and everything. And... Most importantly, hit chance against higher level enemies. Okay, cool. Uh, now that's out of the way and the episode has become long after all, naturally. I am going to call it an episode here. As always, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.